So we call this what we call our down in one slot because, as I said earlier, you know, they always teach you if you, because I've had a little bit of uh, professional media training, I know you can't tell, but I have. Um, and um, they say, right, focus on the objective, address the audience, you know, imagine the audience naked, and we don't want to go there, believe me. Um, but we, they say, look, focus on one thing, and the objective at the end of this, this slot is that the speaker gets to down in one, something to relieve the stress. We had a glass of wine up here last year, if you remember, you did a great job of, uh, of that, Karen. So we've got, we've got our next speaker's favourite tipple, waiting. Okay, um, so it's without further ado really that I introduce, I'm, oh, the other thing I must say is that we always, always drag kicking and screaming this next speaker to do this. I can't really say that was the case in this guy, he's been up for it for weeks, I don't think he'd had sleepless nights anyway. Um, so, with, the with this ref refreshing and slightly off the wall account of what it's like to work in our world, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to give a huge round of applause to a guy who's a big guy, he's got an even bigger heart, our customers just frankly love him. Um, I give you our very own sales and marketing support guy, Tiny. <laughs> Thank you. Right then. Here we go. First of all, can I say, uh, no photographs for serious se uh, security reasons. That's social security. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, can I just say that it's absolutely fantastic to see you as part of the event again this uh, today. And I uh, hope you'll be as generous this evening as you were last year when we supported uh, our charity travel flight. And we've got Dave and Karen there. Where are you? At the back there, they do a tremendous job of child flying. We raised over ten thousand, excuse <coughs> me, ten thousand pounds last year, which was absolutely tremendous. So give yourselves a round of applause for that, please. <laughs> so uh, I am a bit nervous, but uh, Steve Reynolds, I did take Steve's advice about picturing people naked. So if I do look uh, nervous, I get hot flushes. It depends where I'm looking. <laughs> I can't stop laughing at some, and sometimes I get hot flushes. So let me carry on. Anyway, being serious now, I'm sure you're all aware this country's now in a triple dip recession and this industry can no longer sustain it. As you see from this graph I prepared, <laughs> this graph I prepared, you see the country can no longer sustain Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's me, all these snaps. <laughs> there we go. I think that's what she said to anyone. Anyway. <laughs> so that he wasn't it. <laughs> well, as you can say, I'm not going to insult my fellow speakers or yourself by talking about the motor finance. What I know about it, you could all write on the back of a postage stamp. Uh, so why am I here? Well, let me tell you the reason I'm here. I'll take you back to the office about two, six months ago. Andy walks in. That's it, lads. Conference is booked. October 11th, same place, same venue. Oh, that's fantastic, boss. What have you got for speakers this year? I you know Andy. That's got an idea. <laughs> Tiny, you're a speaker. <laughs> this is, uh, tell them about your journey. Oh, yeah. From being a uh, oink, I'm an oink. I like football, I like darts, I like beer, and I like women. In that order. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> my background is, I worked 23 years uh, in a factory. So let's take you back to where I was in 23 years, it's a long time. Uh, <laughs> well, I didn't murder. Uh, <laughs> in fact, uh, he takes me back actually. Last time I stood behind something like this, I was pleading not guilty. <laughs> A lot, of good, a lot of good that did, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I started work at this uh, sports manufacturing firm in 1987. Called my leader sports. Uh, currently a predominant... I can't say that. 
predominantly produce sports hall dolls, what you got today, and I uh, printed them. Thousands of the buggers. <laughs> <laughs> we, we did work for football teams, companies like yourselves, but most of all we did uh, work for breweries, which are close to my heart. He's talking to me, is that kind now? <laughs> Uh, but most things I learned about that job was uh, the British licensing laws back when, but to uh, get a good dinner until three o'clock when the pub shut. Who remembers them days? Put your hands up. <laughs> Awful one, isn't it? <laughs> What's where I was, though? Anyway, this, this continued to boom as a business in 1992, actually got promoted to management. Got a company pension. Uh, what else did they get to that? I didn't have to clock in. Most of all, I got that key to that toilet. <laughs> and these run fantastic. <laughs> anyway, it was a fantastic place to work for actually, I must admit. And uh, a lot of like-minded like audience like myself, uh, we worked there for many, many happy years. But things were going great, they really were going great, but over the years uh, we noticed that the hold all business, we were getting any orders in, going to China, you know, the Far East, uh, we're getting from. <laughs> Come on, I'm talking. Oh, shit. It's all weird, isn't it? Anyway, that's what we were talking about. We'll keep going for many happy years. And uh, one day, I'll never forget you. 2000, March 2009. Got a call. Can all personnel please go to the office? What's this game of bingo we thought? No, uh, <coughs> we got there. Uh, the managing director stood there grinning face a bit like me now, very nervous. And he read out a statement. <coughs> Unfortunately, due to the uh, recession, we're going to make everybody redundant. Anyway, oh, can you imagine that? It's 23 years doing the same job, bang. What do we do now? I mean, uh, create, when you're working in a job for 23 years, uh, you create your own sort of lines, then. I put a. <laughs> Said don't touch. <laughs> That's for me. That was me, my last job. Uh, you get so used to doing. I'm not sure some of you been with the same company a lot of years can identify with that. You've had a good, you've had a good meal provided by others. Uh, you're safe in your job. You don't know anything else. And that was me, king of the king of the jungle there. Uh, anyway, we've got this. Uh, I can't remember what the MD said after that, but I'm absolutely in bits. The world was coming to an end. I thought, what am I going to do now? I said, first thing, I'm going to clean my house. Definitely. Uh, I have to go back to my mum and dad. Oh my God. What's Jeremy Kyle on there in QEC? <laughs> but there was one thing there, what, uh, I thought that's not too, not too bad with this program. Didn't work that program. I'm going to give a shot, yeah, bargain, a fantastic programme. <laughs> they give you 300 quid to spend, don't they? Go around the market and buy three items for 300 pounds. In one hour, I make a deal on it. I don't think you're aware, but I'm the only person to be banned from bargain hunt. Because <laughs> <laughs> after my uh, 60 minutes was up, Mr. Wonnecott says to me, now in time, you're like, what do you get your 300 quid? I says, pissed. <laughs> Stuff. Uh, that day, I did, my world had come, literally come to an end. What do I do now? I know I'll bring up, I'll bring up my old mate Andy Shooter. That's it, I don't know. I don't know me and Andy go back a long time because we uh, mutual love of uh, one of the greatest football teams out of mankind, Huddersfield Town. <laughs> he says he's he he waiting for applause. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, I'll never forget that day. Thank you, Steve. That day, Andy returned me call. I'll never forget that. I pulled over. To kind of joke call. What's up, pal? He'll tell you, Andy. I broke down in tears. Uh, I went, he just the, real, the realization that after 23 years, we all had ended. And uh, what he said next to me, he said next to me, he'll live, he'll live with me for as long as I live. Which looking at say to me now is something to be wrong. He says, uh, <laughs> What's your place again? 
He says, so what about it? He says, there's a big wide world out there and it could be the best thing that's happened, uh, ever happened to you. I thought he was talking bollocks. At <laughs> <laughs> the time I did. At the time I did. I really did. He said, let's meet up with the football tomorrow and have a chat. I'm generally looking for, for a support worker. Just have a few months and you might just fit that bill. Well, I just know the pals act. You know, you generally was looking for a support worker. Anyway, we just uh, pick up a dig that was still sobbing me out out like a baby. <coughs> but we did meet at the football and we had to get a few weeks later in the office. I'm the offering the job of the proviso that if it didn't work out, we would shake hands. This is true, isn't it, mate? <coughs> and after we're, we'll go for a beer, one night after work, and you give me the bad news. <laughs> <coughs> No oh, thanks, mate. As much as I enjoy taking the pint with you, but if you ask me you're a pint in the first three months, I'd have eaten from Christie out at the box. I did that way into a new job, into a motor finance. Didn't know a thing about motor finance. I didn't know what a flat rate was, what a cap, cap code was. Didn't know my APRs from my head, but. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. <laughs> Here we go, play a letter, mate. Uh, anyway, uh, what I'm going to tell you about now is the difference between working in a factory full of oinks into an office full of nerds. <laughs> the first day of work, Monday morning, new jobs showed completely out different the factory environment if I see the office one. For instance, Monday morning chat in the factory would be <coughs> well, we'll be place again. Morning, Tiny. How did weekend go? Did you suck plenty of ale? Yep. Did you watch town? Yep. Did you pull any birds? Nope. <laughs> did I watch my shirt there? Yeah, of course I did. Compare this with Monday morning in the nerd environment. <laughs> the chat <child>, there. Uh... <laughs> Sadly, I must be place again. <laughs> I thought you'd ever release a new, a new version of Cold Ice Cream Sandwich. A bum to upgrade you soon. And did you watch the gadget show? <laughs> what the hell are they on about? It was a funny world to me. Anyway, here I was, pushed into this office environment, working in the motor finance industry, which I mentioned that knew absolutely nothing about. After a few weeks in the job, I went to Andy Sanctuary Sheffield University to do the digital uh, service management course. I've got to say that's one of the hardest things I've ever experienced in my life. Uh, I went to the classroom again after God knows how many years and I sat down with a load of nerds. <laughs> <laughs> they all got with introduce themselves. There's me fresh out of a factory. I'll give you an example of one guy. <coughs> Hello, I'm Julian Farquhar. I work as a wine manager at BT and I'm responsible for overseeing 50 plus staff and making sure processes are met and followed through. What the hell were you talking about? <laughs> and come, everybody did this and come round to me. So I said, up, hello, I'm Tiny. I'm an alcoholic. Seriously, <laughs> 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 you know, them three days were absolutely mind-numbing. I sat down there in the course, which I knew, say, I knew absolutely nothing about. Uh, again, we had an exam at the end, which was very testing, so... I thought six of our inspiration from Andy. We did the mock exam in the morning, which I failed miserably. I rang him up, Andy, I said, I'm not going to do it. I said, I can't, I can't do this. Again, his, his words will live with me forever. You better put the bus up, course, cost 500 quid. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we had this daring advice to actually pass this uh, service management exam. So to my great surprise, I am now a member of ITL service management team, whatever that means. <laughs> All I can say is thank God for multiple choice, but as I like to go, <laughs> pin the tail to a donkey, but they won't let me phone a friend. <laughs> anyway, back into the office, I genuinely threw myself into the job, painstakingly learning what was required to fix problems. I just want at this point to pay tribute to Steve Garton, our operations director, who was telling me everything I know, but Steve, when you're trying to explain technical uh, parts to me, don't call me Ubuntu Linux, here's a training tool which you'll find much better. <laughs> 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 I 
That's what I was having to, with our blood puppets and uh, Ubuntu, believe me. Anyway, as I became more involved in Zoffin's environment, I was fearful that I was actually becoming one of them. <laughs> I was crossing to the dark side. <laughs> I've even got myself an Android phone and I can actually make phone calls on it. How good is that? I've even started learning Klingon. <laughs> and they me up with this later this year. I'm actually going to a Star Wars convention in Nebulon 5. <laughs> That's Bridlington to be in here. <laughs> Think of this. I just don't, don't watch this video. It's not going out on YouTube, is it? You might as well know the nerds. Right. But you see, Andy's words came to me and they got me redundant that this could be the best thing that ever happened to you. Couldn't be more true. I believe I work in a fantastic industry now and I'm fortunate to find myself in a job and enjoy the, the true comradeship I've got it with everyone in this room. Uh, <laughs> hey, there we go. Uh, I just want to pay tribute to my nerd colleagues now. If I put this in the words of the great man. Means <laughs> 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 it's a pleasure to work in this industry. I feel very, very honoured to call you all comrades. Uh, I believe that, uh, you know, Andy's a uh, proud of his support team and uh, I think I'm, you know, Steve can be very proud of us as well. I think we do have a fantastic support desk for you. Yeah. I think, you know, anybody with personally calls get called, uh, get sorted pretty quickly. That's all due to hard work, team ethics. So, I think that's just about me done. Uh, if you've enjoyed what I've said, my name's Tanya with the Frontline Solutions. If you didn't like it, my name's Peter Moats and I work for Blue Funding. <laughs> Okay, I just want to show a show of hands here. Do you think he's earned his right to down his pint or what? Yeah. Go off you go. I have to exercise. <laughs> Drum roll, please. Please. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I just want to say, Tiny, you know, you're in the job out of merit, in fact, and you know, we, we did make that little job in French for a long time. Um, it's normally the devil incarnate when you employ friends, family, and it generally turns sour, but I've got to genuinely say that this guy is without doubt well worthy of his position, and like I said, our customers love it, there's no doubt about that. Surely somebody's got a question or two for this gentleman. Here we go, finish. Child flight, child flight have joined us, by the way. I took the side. Yeah, that one. Hey, Tani, now, now that you've crossed over to the uh, to the dark side, what, what do you think is the uh, best thing about working in the motor finance trade? Well, you're the what? No, that honestly, I'm, I'm learning new things every day. Not just in the motor finance, in, in technical stuff. Which makes me nervous, I suppose. There's never a dull moment, uh, as I say, it's just like my old job, I'll go back to the lion and sleep in the tree. Same thing every day, day in doubt. Now it's something new every day, meeting new people every day. It's fantastic, love it. Tiny, I've got to, she's actually dragged herself out of bed just to see you, right? <laughs> Believe me. Uh, she's suffering that. badly from the flu. Uh, she's come, so come on, how did you rate against uh, your good self last year, Karen? Oh, far better. Oh, come on, there we go. Good question. Oh, gosh. Um, obviously, given your experiences, your 23 years in, in your previous occupation, do you actually prefer what you're doing now? I know it's completely different to what you were doing then, but do you find, obviously, you mentioned that in the factory it was all banter with the lads, it's completely different, yeah. obviously, working for Andy, but given, given the choice, would you prefer to do what you're doing now to, to what you were doing back then? Is it more... Um, inspiring? Is it something that you wake up each day and think, you know what, I want to go to work today? 
Exactly, because like Andy said, it could be the best thing that ever happened to you. And it, it really is. It, it's, I love it. I, 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 all I can say is I love it. By the way, Karen, you wasn't allowed to put in your drink. <laughs> <laughs> No, I just, <laughs> no, it's new challenges every day. It's a big new people. And it keeps that ticking over. But before I just died, I think. Andy. No, no, no. no yes, no, yes. No, no, no. You're sat there. No, you don't have to. You're crying with laughter. But come on, is it not great to see a little bit of fun back into the job, yeah? A guy who, you know, in what we've perceived as an industry that's a bit kind of dour and a bit boring to actually somebody to say, you know, I get out of bed every morning, I look forward to going to work, yeah? What, you know, what do you think? Uh, it, absolutely what Andy said. It's just. It's refreshing to hear somebody get up there and say, well, I didn't understand this industry, I still probably don't understand a lot of it. Yeah. But what you're getting out of it is brilliant, because you're just giving yeah. something back to us. Thank you, Tony. Cheers. Thank you very much. Any more for any more? Oh, Fred. I knew you'd be up there, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's all well and good, all the, the fun and games, but being serious for a second, what, what's your favourite operating system? <laughs> I don't like going home. <laughs> 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 <Okay>. <laughs> so, shall I introduce the person that's actually speaking? It's Kevin Bradbury from the SG Financial Services now, indeed. Yeah, so. There you go. Question to yourself and Tiny uh, with you two being here, who's going to watch Huddersfield Town tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> Twice as so many people who say Stoke City there. <laughs> no, seriously, have you got a question? <laughs> Um, no, not really. <laughs> Your cards marked, I'm sure. Um, we do like these things to be fun. We like to come and relax. You know, yeah, we tackle some very, very serious issues and you know some some great issues. But you know, we uh, um, this is what we're all about. You know, getting everybody together and um, you know, it takes some guts to do what to do that. I've got uh, one then. Especially, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to win, am I? So I think what we do at this point is we wrap this up. Ladies and gentlemen, come on, let's have a huge round of applause for time.